Hello everyone, welcome to Tooltech MD. In this video we're going to replace the subframe in the 2001 Chevy Cavalier. Alright guys, so we have this subframe here that we got to do. I already got the car on, I jacked up and on jack stands. I'll show you where I jacked it up. On the right side of the car, I jacked it up right at that support there. I right passed the oil pan. Right at that support is where I jacked it up on that side. And on this side, I jacked it up uh, right here at the lower control arm where it meets. You guys can see that. Um, anyways, upon buying this car, I overlooked a pretty major issue here. And uh, <laughs> that's this giant hole in the subframe. And the whole thing is pretty flaky. But the way the wheel was, and I couldn't really get a good view underneath, I completely overlooked it. So, uh, we're going to be replacing it today, so that should be fun. Um, <laughs> so stay tuned. Oh, and as far as jack stands, I put them right here underneath the car. A little bit crinkly, but they're going to do. Um, and as, as well, on both sides, I put them on uh, almost right underneath the, the door, right behind the fender on both sides and on both sides too I also have a jack supporting actually that one came down but um and I have the wheels underneath for added, added safety so we should be okay <clears throat> all right let's begin now I plan to just drop the subframe and then transfer everything over afterwards now this way I can keep track of what bolts go where I'm going to use this piece of cardboard, it's an old pizza box, and I'm going to use the, the new subframe that I have here as kind of a reference to kind of mark out where I'm going to be putting bolts, and I'm going to mark them. So this way we can kind of keep our bolts organized, and this should help us in doing that. So when I take them out, I'll put them in their spot, and this way we know exactly what goes where. Alrighty, so now that that's out of the way, I say we get to work. Make sure this isn't going to go anywhere. Got the e-brake on, so we should be fine. Alrighty. I sprayed everything down with PB Blaster uh, every day for the past week. So hopefully everything should come out easily. Alrighty, so I couldn't quite capture it on video. But the, uh, the cotter pin, I took a small screwdriver on the opposite side. And I used this little Torx bit and I just hammered it through till I could get a grip with it with a needle nose pliers and I pulled it through. Now I'm gonna get an 18 millimeter wrench on this ball joint and see if it'll loosen up. Hopefully it will. Hopefully you guys can see. Hoping so anyways. Make sure the wrench is on there good. Okay. And alright, came loose. Keep hitting this camera into everything. I do apologize for that. I'm gonna get this castle now, though. Let's unclip all these lines off the uh, control arm. We're gonna start removing some fasteners now. First thing I'm going to remove is this guy right here. I'm going to need this long extension right now, so I'll get rid of that for now. Ouch. So here's all the, here's one of our fasteners. We got one here. We got, this is what holds in the A arm. One back there, one back there, one there, one there. And then our motor mount is there. Let's get this brace removed first. All right, 
I'm gonna try to get this brace removed. It's gonna be a 13. 13 millimeter, this front brace bolt. I hope you guys can see. This front brace first. Okay. Piece of cardboard. Don't tell me I didn't bring it over. Another bolt here for our rest of our brace. See if we can get around the splash shielding, hopefully. Make sure I'm on it. No, 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 yeah. Okay. Get right out. So far, so good. Brace. that well on the other side of that that would not be fun if that broke okay that was a brace <laughs> now I may want a shorter extension who knows we're gonna be switching to 15 I believe That's not a 15. This is a 15. Oh boy. That one's not moving. Come on, let's work at the other. Oh, because I'm. Because it got switched to tightening. Jesus. I was say, that was the first time my Roby Impact's ever failed me. This was that. This was that L1 bolt. This is the driver's side, so. Okay. And then we got that one there. It holds in our A arm. Okay. Now we got this one over here. I gotta watch that. Keep hitting that switch with my finger. Okay. I sprayed everything with penetrating oil every day for a week and it got up there pretty far, surprisingly. I'm impressed with that. PV Blaster, good stuff. Three. Alright, so a little update. This upper bolt here, I just got it out. What I did, took my half inch breaker bar, 15 millimeter socket. I ran it up right here, got it there. You guys can see that. Just uh, watch out for just watch out for that brake line, and I was able to get it twice. I was a little bit concerned. I thought I was rounding it over, so at that point I figured, you know, maybe that force was enough to help out the impact in the swivel socket. So then I took the impact with the swivel socket and the 15 millimeter, and I went behind the CV axle like that and routed it up through there, and it was just enough to get it out. So we got that. All right, now let's move our operation to the other side. Alrighty, so I just repositioned my jack stand to this part here. This way I have both jacks free to help me lower the subframe and raise the new one in. I'm going to put a light under here, hopefully, so we can somewhat see what's going on. And the first thing I'm going to, under, uh, the first thing I'm going to address on this side is the motor mount. Let's get that out. Actually, no, you know what, we'll just work our way in like we did on the other side. Alrighty. 
with this guy. And then once I get rid of that motor mount, I eh, should probably do that last. I don't really know though. Now, you know what? Actually, I better do the power steering rack bolts now. Otherwise, it won't happen. So, I see this one right here. Oh, come on, light. I think I'm just going to try to get a wrench on it. Turn that loose. I know you guys can't really see, but I can't see either. So, just gonna try to loosen it. Probably gonna be easier or something. Damn it, I'm hitting the damn camera on everything. I do apologize. That thing is torqued. Oh. Ah! I got some movement. It's a plus. Unless we're just rounding it over, which is entirely possible. Uh, I wish I can. Uh, we're not rounding it over. Oh, nope, it's turning. It's a plus. Okay. Good. Let me reposition us here. I'll tell you what, ratcheting wrench would really be nice right about now. Impact tools are nice, but you can't always have them. Sometimes you gotta revert back to just the old wrench. Am I happy about that? No, not really. Do you mind? Yeah. What are you gonna do? It's not always fair in auto repair. Uh, we're gonna be here all night at this rate. Just because my arm doesn't reach that far. I'm trying to get you guys a good shot here. Making sacrifices. I could be under it. Wrenching away, but it is what it is. Getting there. I'm gonna give my arm a rest for a second. I'm getting looser. That's good. Wow, I'm just dead tired. I hope that the GoPro can see what I'm getting at here. I'm not really sure if it can or not. I'm hoping so. I'll speed this up for you guys. <laughs> so y'all don't gotta sit through it, but it's pretty miserable. And the way this works is there's just a nut back there. The steering rack is through bolted, so like I said, there's a nut back there, so that's why we get that wobble that we're getting. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. Let's see if I can get it with my finger now. I can't even get my finger up there. Oh my god, I keep hitting you guys into the car. Oh, at this point, at this rate, the wrench is our best friend.
Alright, I've had enough. Crawling under there and grabbing it. Ah. Or not. Well, back to the wrench. Where'd it go? The subframe is really rough. Just, I don't know how I overlooked it, but what are they gonna do? Eventually, this will come out, maybe. There we go. I think we're there. We are. Steering rack bolt number one out. Okay, there it is. I didn't really get to cover the ball joints too thoroughly because I was having a lot of trouble with them. So let me see if I can't do that for you guys. Let me get a pickle fork and this works like this. So now what we're gonna do is give it a few whacks with the hammer. I know now the lighting is really bad. But live and learn, right? All right, I'm sitting on the ground now. That was not the goal. I'm just gonna hammer it. There we go. Let's pry down. There we go, got it. Yeah. We might need a new seal on the side. I know on the driver's side we definitely do. I am angled that one up because that one did not want to budge. That's all you do with that. Now that's free from the knuckle. All right, now I'm gonna get something to, to support underneath the here when we drop the frame. And uh, all we have is that, this one bolt left. We have one left back there. And then just the dog bone motor mount. And then this sucker should be ready to drop. All right. So now all I'm gonna do, this subframe is about ready to drop. I just gotta get some support underneath of it. It's got that one fastener left and then the, the dog bone motor mount. And that's it, this thing's ready to come out. All right, just this one last fastener. about ready to come out oh boy now we just have the dog bone motor mount uh, jack under here Up. really all we need now just one fastener we've got one here if you guys can see that hopefully one there for the dog bone and then one there and this thing should be ready to come out the splash shield is kind of run away but we'll just try to work around it first one First one out. Don't worry, I can't see either. Okay. And the second one. Alright, and with that, the subframe should be ready to come out. 
There's that right there. This bolt, where we know where it is, we got two extra of those. And that should be about it for the subframe. Now we just hope it releases from the steering rack okay. Hopefully. And hopefully all the, oh, 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 I almost forgot. There's a couple lines that are still clipped to it. I gotta get out. Okay. It's a little bit more. My pry bar wasn't so, had such a freaking incline on that claw. There we go. Come on. So close. Steering rack is out, hopefully un unscathed, hopefully. And now, there's the subframe. <laughs> All right, here it is. Ah, the old subframe. So, what we're gonna transfer over, we're gonna transfer over both A arms. I'm gonna replace this ball joint. Cause actually I'm gonna replace both ball joints. Cause I punctured both the seals. So I'll replace those. And the sway bar link. And maybe the bushings. These brackets hopefully are okay. Alright. This thing is pretty flaky. Look at that. Uh, car only has 80,000 miles on it. Rusted out from sitting. That's uh, that's crazy. All right. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out Tooltech MD. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you have any questions regarding any of the content I covered in the video, please feel free to leave a comment, and I will answer each and every one of them. Now I also covered some other various repairs, such as the ball joints, the sway bar link bushings, so I will be uploading those in the future. And also be sure to stay tuned for part two, where we cover the replacement of the subframe. Again guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, please feel free to leave a like. Again, feel free to comment, and also consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much, and have a great day.